So long short term memory. Um, so this, um, there's, a, there's a fun story to it, or several stories. So if you haven't heard of uh, Jürgen Schmidhuber, um, he's a very memorable researcher. Um, you should check him out. But basically, at some point, uh, so the story goes, uh, Joshua Benjo, at least this is the version from Joshua Benjo that I've heard, um, posed a question to Jürgen Schmidhuber about you know, me remembering things in time series and so on. And well, the story goes that then basically Jürgen engineered something called long short term memory. Um, and actually, the guy who really did it was Sepp Hochreiter. He was the, I think, master student at the time. Um, and where they probably started with was, and this was like 19, you know, 97, 98. And at that time, this was a strange paper. I mean, I knew about it. It was like, yeah, OK, yet another weird uh, neural network paper. Well, what's the point, right? And that's pretty much what everybody thought, well, maybe with the exception of Jürgen and, and Sepp and a few others, for over a decade until people actually had enough compute to try it out. So if you design a memory cell, then you need a couple of parts. And the interpretation is a little bit taken liberally here. But basically, what you could do in a memory cell is you would want to have an input gate to decide you know, whether you're going to read something in. You want to have a reset gate to decide whether you reset the internal state. And you want to have a mechanism to decide whether you will actually read from it, so an output gate in this case. So if you, you, know, you design your DRAM and you kind of you know, skim read a you know, description of you know, DRAMs, then you'd pretty much come away with a conclusion that you know, these are the things that you care about. And so with those, so to say, insights, they decided to engineer something mathematical that has that property. So this predates the GRU by over a decade. Okay. And it is, in most cases, superior, just that it's also a little bit more complex. So the first thing that you would do is you would have a forget gate. And this basically should just shrink values towards 0. You need to have an input gate, which decides whether we should ignore the input data, and an output gate, which decides whether we should actually use the hidden state for the output generated by the LSTM. Now, the key distinction to the GRU is that it actually has two different hidden states. So it has the you know, run of the mill hidden state. And then it has a memory cell. And that memory cell cannot be read directly from the outside. It's just some extra internal state that it just carries with it. Okay, Which yeah, sounds like a strange thing, but let's see how it goes. So the first thing we have to do is we need to you know, go and you know, design gates. And those gating functions are exactly the same as before. We have you know, a, i, f, and o. And they are just you know, sigmoid of then some linear function of you know, input and hidden state, and then some bias. Okay. So far, this looks pretty much the same as before, just that you know, we have three. Before that, we had two. And with three, you can do more than with two. So fine. So the next thing is, let's look at the candidate memory. And this is where things get a little bit interesting. So our candidate memory cell, so this is not a hidden state, it's the memory, is basically given by, well, some you know, linear function of the hidden state and uh, the input. And that's you know, the memory. OK. So remember, you can basically you know, read, in, read stuff into memory in, on a the memory cell, on, like in electronics, and so they designed this. Okay. And so then, well, the next thing is, I need to decide whether to forget something. And so the forget gate 
is exactly the thing that helps me decide whether I should just keep what I have before or whether I you know, should update it to the new thing, the new ctidl. So this is a little bit similar to what we had before with Z and the GRU, but now this just operates on the memory. Right now that memory doesn't do anything useful yet, it just is there, you can't read it, you can't do anything with it, but we've already used up one gate to just decide whether we should reset the memory or how we should update it. Okay. And then now comes the fun thing, namely the hidden and output gate is just the output gate times well tang of that memory cell. Okay, so remember this HT actually then you know is used to you know manipulate the memory again, and then this is used again to out manipulate the hidden state. So that's why you really need two of those variables to carry around with you all the time. So this was probably a little bit long-winded and complex. Here's the entire thing in its full glory. Okay, so I have three gates. I, F, and O. So input for get and output. I have candidate memory, C tilde. I have the actual memory, C. And then I have the output that's just some function of the memory. Okay, so this looks like, well, okay, it's more complicated. We are moving more toward a Rube Goldberg machine, but yeah, okay, why not? Um, but it does very similar things to what we discussed before, just that they have a little bit more expressive freedom in how I parameterize things. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Well, in that case, 